Birdman for Birdman on the Mountain, hanging out here at the Birdcage. And it's time for another community shout. That's where you can come in, talk about what you got going on in the community, events, activities. And, uh, you know, we get some sponsors that come in here from time to time and chat about what they've got going on. With me today, we're going to start off with uh, Mr. Henry. How are you, sir? Wonderful, Rob. How are you? And you're with Home Depot. I'm doing great. I am. Um, Home Depot is my, my favorite place uh to shop has been in the past. We we all know that you know every 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 project you do in your home requires at least two to four trips. To... <laughs> well, why is it that we can't remember everything we need? I don't, I don't understand that. I don't know. <laughs> and we always change in the middle. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Let's add this. <laughs> yeah, of course. You know, I always get input uh, that that's maybe sometimes liked and sometimes it's like great. Uh, well, since we got this all apart, let's add that. Yeah. Uh, just did a a uh, sort of a, an emergency remodel of a bathroom a while back, and uh, you guys uh, provided us with phenomenal stuff. So uh, it's it's great. And as we've said about your support of veterans, I, I can't go any further than uh, that. That's the best reason to, as I say, go down the road and turn orange. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so we want to talk a little bit today about something that you guys do monthly, and it's a workshop, and it's for kids, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So tell me tell me what's involved there. So it's a kids workshop. We do it. Um, the first Saturday of every month, and the next one will be January 5th. Um, the kids should be still out of school, so you should have, you know, be racking your brains as to what to do. Bring them down to Home Depot on Saturday, let them pound some hammers, make a, a cool craft. Usually there's two different um, things that they can build, and they are, we provide everything. All you have to do is provide a child, and um, they get to pound nails, they get to paint the project, sticker the project, depending on what the project is. Um, it's a, it's just a wonderful thing when you see these kids, and there'll be up to 50 or more kids, and they're just pounding away. Pounding and, away, having some fun. Yeah. And, and the project cost is? Nothing. Nothing. It's Absolutely free. Absolutely free. Yeah, you just bring your kid. Exactly. And sometimes we actually provide um, each child with an apron. It just depends on if we can get our hands on the children's aprons. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something that some of the kids have aprons. Some, some of the kids that come are now closer to adults. And they bring their stuff that they've gotten, you know, five, ten years ago. And they're still wearing their little bitty aprons yeah. and coming in and doing the the thing. So, um, so it teaches a lot of things. It teaches them, you know, first of all, how to follow directions. Yes. And then, of course, hands-on stuff, right, with the hammers and nails and yep. paint. And and uh, so what's some of the projects that you had in the past? So they there's a little race car. There's helicopters. There's humvees. Um, there's birdhouses. There's little planners around around mother's day you usually get things that are themed that mm -hmm. the kids can make for mom father's day the same thing um they're just little little things some some of them the kids are have our toys that they can play with uh the one that we just did was a little sleigh for christmas mm -hmm. and you know it's something that you can give to grandma whatever you know um but again, it's all about bringing your kids out. It's all for free. Um, I have yet to see a child there that did not enjoy themselves. Um, and we also offer, um, if you if you would like to bring a group in from a school or, you know, brownie troop, what have you, right? Contact um, Amanda Wise at the store. And she can set it up to when you can bring in your small group and they'll do a special one just for you. Very cool. Awesome. So you just get a hold of the store there, Amanda. Um, and it's easy to come in and actually just find people at the store too, right? It is. It is. Typically, all you have to do is find whoever the manager on duty is and they can provide any information regarding that whatsoever. Okay. Anything else you want to tell us about things going on at Home Depot? Well, right now, <clears throat> probably one of the more exciting things we have going on is that um, all of our 
Christmas and holiday related merchandise is currently between 25 and 50 percent off um, we have a lot of promos going on um, when Christmas is over we're gonna move into a storage event where you can get totes and shelving and stuff to organize your home organize all the stuff that you just got extra right yes. yeah. <laughs> and vanities will follow that um, I would like to talk about and I'm not sure how much I can really talk about but you know we participate in the spooktacular every year right and the spooktacular right now is slated to be relocating yes to frontier field yes that is true yes i've heard that and that, that's pretty confirmed yes <laughs> and so um i would just like to invite everybody to come out this year because we are going to take it up a quite a few notches nice okay cool so i do recommend that people um actually so I guess the question is, will they allow you more time yes. since it's not on the street to yes. set, oh, this is good. Yes. So, so they're going to, they've talked about giving us four days. Wow. And with four days, I mean, you've seen what A we've Home done. Depot crew of four you, days. Yeah. You've seen what we've done <laughs> with four hours. Wow. Um, <laughs> okay. Yes. Four days. It's going to be, it's going to be unbelievable. If I'm going to, I'm going to give it my best effort to make this something that people really enjoy awesome that it will be the best that that they've ever had on this mountain very cool so, awesome well we look we're looking forward to that cool and kudos by the way on your uh, float for the uh, the uh, christmas parade was, thank you it was a lot of work it was a lot of work and it was a beautiful float awesome cool anything else um you know, I really don't think I really have anything else. Very cool. Awesome. So uh, thank you for your time. Once again, it is Henry with Home Depot. Make sure you stop by there and say hey, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks, Rob. Okay, hanging out with me now, I've got uh, Allison Hefner with Navajo County Public Health Services District. You've got a uh, save the date, don't you? Yes. Okay, yes. I just want to put that out there. So um, first things first. Uh, special Kids with Special Needs and PBS Kids and NPC are coming together to bring um, a uh, 2019 First Things First Early Childhood Conference. And at this conference, it's May 18th, 2019 at NPC in Snowflake. Um, it's a whole all-day event. And I'm just going to read this straight up so you have it. It says, mark your calendars for this free event to support professional development for early childhood professionals in our region. That's Navajo and Apache counties. All Navajo and Apache County early childhood educators, home visitors, parents, support program staff, and professionals are invited to attend. This event will allow professionals to learn, collaborate, and share best practices. So this is this is going to be a very big deal for our community. There's going to be a lot of different education aspects to it. We have an incredible speaker coming in talking excuse me, talking about ACEs, mm -hmm. which is as adverse child experiences. Um, there's a resilience uh, project building and it's just, don't miss this. Do not miss it. We only have room for 300 people. We're also going to have about 60 vendors that are specific to children with special health care needs, uh, early childhood development, um, and so on. So it's going to be nice. We'll serve you a lunch. It's, you'll, it's just priceless the information very good thank you very much for that thank you so once again allison hefner with uh, navajo county public health services district still hanging out here in the birdman media studios and uh, joining me now uh is uh, mr aaron leach how are you i'm good so uh lights are looking awesome we were by there a couple times now and uh, kids just love it so we're, we're getting the traffic um we want every night now um and once I've been mentioning, it's the uh, Heroes Christmas Tribute, Magic on the Mountain. Um, they're down by the Sholo City Hall. Yeah, right next door. It's the uh, Veterans Memorial, which is fitting because, you know, it's honoring veterans, first responders. Mm -hmm. And, you know, stick around for a little bit. Don't Some people I've seen drive by it and like, oh, well, it's just over in one area. You've got lights all the way around. And, and yeah, it's the, the, the whole park area. The jail's lit up. Um uh, and, you know, and for all the, the people that don't have kids that have to stay in the car seat, you don't have to get out. Yeah. Just tune, pull up, tune in 96.5. 96.5 and uh, play away. Cool. Yeah, we just, um, Walmart just gave us about, um, I think about 1,200 candy canes all together to hand out for kids now. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very cool. So, and somebody's there in that tent area usually all yeah, the time. Yeah, I'm, I'm there every night, six to nine. Okay. 
Very um, cool. You get there right at six. I'll start with the national anthem and then God bless USA. And okay. then the playlist will change after that. Awesome. Uh, need anything or uh... um, the cha- It won't be the same playlist. I I change. I mean, it might be the same songs. They won't right. be in the same exact order every night because I always change it and I always throw in the some random tribute for the heroes here and there. And of course, some Christmas era, uh, not Christmas, but um, Christian songs too, like Chris Tomlin. He's awesome. Yeah. Cool. Um, awesome. Okay. Well, uh, make sure you stop by and check that out. Uh, thank you for stopping by today. Anything else you wanted to mention? or Yeah, just on the weekends, um, Arizona Mount Coffee will be there Friday, Saturdays, most likely. Um, selling hot cocoa and coffee and some pastries. It's, it's good coffee, too. $2 a cup, but it's Ghirardelli hot cocoa. Very good. Mm. <laughs> awesome. And, of course, coffee for all the people that need it. You know, so okay. you got hot cocoa and coffee, and then you guys can stay in your cars and watch it. So there's ways to stay warm to watch the lights and the videos. Very good. Thank you. Of course, and uh, the one last thing is I won't be there this Friday because I got a karaoke gig, so it'll just be the music, Okay. and the speakers won't be there, of course, so you can just pull up and uh, tune your radio in. Okay. So, but any other, and then uh, Christmas Eve night, um, we the lights will be dark because we go down to the valley for family, so that's the only uh, two nights that are different from the normal six to nine. Appreciate that. So once again, Aaron Leach with the Magic on the Mountain Heroes Christmas. Come check light. it out. Awesome family and friend event. Awesome. See you. Hey, Birdman, hanging out here still in the Birdman Media Studios. Joining me now from Navajo County Public Health Services District is Allison Hefner. How are you? Good. How are you? Doing well. So we've got some things to talk about today. You're going to talk about the, the big thing that's been going on, right? Yes, the yeah. Community Health Improvement Plan and the Community Health Assessment. So tell us all about it. So... This project first, I just want to let everybody know, was put together by our partners, um, which is Navajo County Public Health Services District, Summit Healthcare, North Northeastern Arizona at Work, Northland Pioneer College, ChangePoint Integrated Health, and North Country Healthcare. So these were the big major healthcare players in our community. And what we did is we came together to assess all of Navajo County's healthcare needs. Okay. So what that means is um, it was a lot of organizing committees. So for instance, the, the names I just mentioned were our advisory board for this. They also financed, they also financed this um, event. And then we had a map committee come together, which is mobilization for action planning and partnership. And what that committee is, is it's over 52 different agencies, organizations, and community members throughout all of Navajo County. They represent the tribes, they represent Winslow to Heber to Snowflake to Sholo to Pine Top, just everywhere. And they come in um, twice a year and guide where we're going. So one of the things that we did at the first meeting is we um, created a vision and we created what we wanted to see. And I'm just going to read the vision from the paper so you guys understand where I'm going with this. So the vision of the community health assessment is to educate was education, accessibility, and leadership by promoting quality health through community education, planning, and partnership. So that's what this is. This is the community identifying their health needs and then addressing those needs. Um, So we did that and got the information by doing three assessments. One assessment was the community health survey. Most of you saw that out there. We were pushing it, take the survey, it matters. Well, it does matter and it did matter. And we were able to get 1,108 people to complete the survey. And that information was invaluable to us because that was the community, again, telling us what to do. And how did that number compare to like previous years of, oh, it was of the survey? Triple. I, you know, I, I think, well, yeah, almost triple. Um, I think the previous year, um, 400 was the most on the survey. Now, we would have had 1,500. But some people take the survey and then they don't enter the demographics and we can't use that. So Uh. make sure when you take our survey, take the whole thing if you really want to have a say in where the um, direction our healthcare goes as a county. Um, Then the other thing is we had two focus groups. We had a focus group in Winslow and a focus group in Sholo. And those were a little bit more intimate, smaller people. We had about 12 people there. And those could not be anybody from a healthcare agency. They had to be community members. And this was community members saying what they see as the issues, what they see as our strengths and our weaknesses. So then after that, we did um, collection analysis of epidemiological and other top data. So that was getting with all of our advisory board partners, getting their data. That was getting with Arizona. Arizona Department of Health Services getting their data. There was a lot of um, trying to identify where the data was and then access that data specific 
to Navajo County residents. So we were able to do that, which is exciting. Um, we got all this data, and what we did is we analyzed everything between the, the survey, the two focus groups, and the data to create our community health assessment. And what it first did is it showed us, because when we were looking at the data, all together, it kind of shows red flags. You know, mm -hmm. you have your community members saying substance abuse is an issue. You have the data saying substance abuse is an issue. And you have the focus groups talking about substance abuse is an issue. Um, it's not something that we told them. It's something that they told us. So that was kind of exciting to see. So what we ended up having to do, because we can't focus on every strategy. I think there was 25 different strategies that were um, identified um, or issues, I should say, healthcare issues. And so we went back to the MAP committee and had them take a survey and say, identify your top th your, your top three issues right. out of this. So they were able to do that and they got it down to about 12. And then at the meeting, they got it down even further and said, these are the issues we want to focus on. So this is where we get into the community health improvement plan. So we had the CHA completed. Now in the community health improvement plan, this MAP committee came together and said, we're focusing on these issues. And now we're going to do strategies to address these issues and identify resources to address these issues. So that's what they did. So um, the priority issues that they um, identified, I'll just go through real quick, is number one is substance abuse. Navajo County, um, County's alcohol and induced death rate is four times higher than in Arizona. So that shows you why that, that one was picked. Um, two was poverty. Um, one in three Navajo County residents live in poverty. That is way too high. Um, Three is mental health and behavioral health. So our suicide rate in Navajo County is two times higher than Arizona's suicide rate. Um, chronic disease was our fourth one. And cardiovascular disease and cancer are the number one and number two leading causes of death in Navajo County. And then our fifth one, it's never identified by anybody but public health. It's an epidemic. It's an issue. So we included it in because it has to be addressed. Sexually transmitted infection was selected by Public Health Service District. The data was so significant, we could not ignore this priority. There was 884 cases of chlamydia last year and syphilis in Navajo County has increased by 800%. That is significant. So now what we're doing is we've developed goals and strategies to address this. So where um, the action plans is addressing substance abuse um, and including both prevention and treatment. We want to focus on that and get a lot of people, not not really anymore. We're starting to get out of being siloed as different agencies, which right. is really exciting to see. And that's you, good. You get more done as a team. So wh that's what we're doing. We're coming together and, and trying to, you know, address protocols and make sure that, the, you know, it's evidence-based and we're doing what's best for the community. Um, address poverty and related issues of unemployment, poor housing, lack of insurance, poor food, nutrition, improving health and well-being. Um, provide a comprehensive, accessible mental and emotional care system to our residents. That is very important. And that was actually requested in the focus group. Um, promote healthy behaviors that prevent chronic disease such as diabetes, heart disease, cancer, and chronic conditions. Educate the community that they're in control of their chronic disease. Um, reduce sexually transmitted infections. Again, public health is taking that one on. Um, so the last stage that we're in right now is our action stage for this. And currently, we are presenting all this information out to community events, towns, cities, boards of supervisors, and Birdman Media. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're trying to get that out and we're letting people know that we have a coalition specific to each one of these um, priorities. If somebody's interested in being a part of any of these coalitions, they're welcome to contact me through public health. Um, the other thing is, is we have the MAP meeting, which uh, directs us on where we're going and they meet and twice a year. Uh, the next meeting is February 27th. And if you're interested as an agency, an organization or community member in being a part of that, please contact me and let me know and we'll get you invited to that. And then, um, so moving forward, um, we're going to be working on these different um, strategies, um, hopefully moving the needle, collecting data and analyzing and evaluating that what we are doing is working. And if it's not, we'll reassess and try something different. Um, the goal is, is to address these healthcare um, issues in our community. So, about 2022, this will be between 2021 and 22, we will update the CHA and CHIP with the new information that we've had. Um, and again, this report is used to develop the community health improvement plan. However, the report can be utilized to obtain grants, support community strategic plan, and academically. Like, so we have nurses that contact us and say, we have to do, I have to do some kind of a paper. Do you have this that I can use? It's very, um, it's, it's very powerful with grants, especially now having this information. 
I want to stress that the this is not the only information in this chat. It's not all about substance abuse. We have actually been able to identify um, our, uh, pri our, our vulnerable populations or our populations that need a little bit more um, focus, like the senior citizens, children with disabilities. You know, our, our survey came back and said 21% of families in in, Air, in Navajo County have a child or an adult living with them with a disability. That's huge data. Um, we have a lot of information um, that will help a lot of our nonprofits in this community. So you can access this on NavajoCountyAZ.gov and use it in your grant writing. Um, it's data, community input, three-page summary. That's really lots of pictures and nice, and you can show that off to anybody. It's really good. Um, survey results, focus groups results, and 190 detailed data tables where, where you can access the information you need to put into your uh, grant writing. So um, again, we can be your, it can be accessed on NavajoCountyAZ.gov. Um, and if you're interested in being involved in any of these committees, you can contact me through Navajo County Public Health at 928-532-6050. Ask for me or extension 5073. Again, my name is Allison Hefner. It was long. I know that was fast. <laughs> so I wanted to get it in there. <laughs> Very good. Once again, it's uh, Allison Hefner with Navajo County Public Health Services District. Yes. Okay, still hanging out here at the Birdman Media Studios, and now joining me, I've got a couple individuals. I've got Kirk Webb, and I've got Vicki. How you doing? Good, thank you. Miss Solomon, how are you been? Awesome. Fantastic. So what are we talking about? Because, you know, we've got combined <laughs> agencies here, so you're trying to confuse me. I know. It's like, it's okay, what, what would uh, Timber Mace Fire and Medical be doing with uh, Nexus, Nexus Coalition? Yeah. Nexus Coalition. I'm going to guess a pickup, maybe. I don't know. Or maybe not picking up. It's, it's So you work in prevention. I, and, I do. And that's what I like, is because if we put more work in prevention, we don't have to run around and, and do things. Right. My job, I or I look at my job as... If I can keep the guys from going on calls, I've done a good job. Right. So that's that's my whole goal is to try to make us a safer community. Which doesn't look as heroic, but it really honestly is more heroic that you not put people in harm's way. Right. Nobody likes to take a trip to the hospital in an ambulance and, right, you know, so it's like, Absolutely. let's... Uh, <laughs> So on a variety of shows, it's funny, I've covered this topic uh, in uh, this morning with a show I do uh, nationally, it's called The Pillar uh, for the Interest Alliance. We were talking about, you know, it's time to get back into the holiday spirit because there's been a lot going on in our society, uh, in our government, things like that, that, that have really skewed towards the negative. And then, of course, people have tragedies that happen around holidays and you get into this whole depressed mode and it's, it's easy to be even more depressed when everybody's supposed to be excited or happy. So that's kind of what we're at, right? Absolutely. So talk us through that. Well, I, I think, um, before we get depressed, I think stress hits us. You know, everybody has a tremendous amount of stress. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, whenever we get stressed out, it affects every organ in our body, the brain, the heart, the lungs, the muscle, the liver, and just some really simple tips on stress Yes. is, um, move your body, keep your body moving. Okay. Um, meditate, so your deep breathing. Um, if you pay attention to your breathing throughout the day, a lot of us just do little tiny short breaths, not that deep breathing that we should be doing. Um, take some time out and do something that you enjoy. Just take a break from everything. The world will always be there when you come back. So and time then, out like when you sit the kids in the corner. For, exactly. So time we out for do yourself. that to ourselves. Absolutely. So it's time for me to sit in the corner. <laughs> Absolutely. Take time out, get support, and then just do one thing at a time. Try not to do 20 different things at, at the same time. That'll yeah, so, help with your stress. So just pace yourself. Absolutely. Yeah, relax. It's, 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 it's real easy to get yourself in a fervor over everything. And, and you know, it's uh, got to get gifts, got to do this, got to do that. But relax. Uh, right. And, and it's like, you know, uh, <clears throat> you mentioned about the holiday season and everything going on. And, you know, and I think a lot of that depression kind of comes into because it's, it kind of goes back to it's centered around family. Mm -hmm. You know, and how many families are having issues and troubles and, and things going on. So that feeds into that stress factor. And and nobody knows how to push your buttons more than family, right? Absolutely. <laughs> right. So and, back off on the button yeah. pushing. Well, and, you know, people always ask me, hey, are you ready for Christmas? You know, I'm like, uh, is it the 24th? <laughs> it, it, you know, because I, I, and, and I don't, I don't really do this. I do a little bit of planning ahead but in a way it's like because i look at it as you know if i wait till the 24th one um i only have so much selection to yeah choose you from. limit your <laughs> options so you don't have to worry it's not and, it's not such a stress to pick right, right. I, don't, right. I only have so much time to get it done and maybe i'll save money 
<laughs> you know, because right. it, it's, but not that that's, but I, it's kind of a comical way to look at it. And, and it, for me, that's kind of how I, I don't become stressed out. I, it's not something I need to worry about. I got plenty of other things to work on and, and take care of. And, and so I just kind of put that off and, you know, just try to enjoy life. It's like, I, and I think a lot of people kind of forget to, you know, the old saying, what, stop and smell the roses. Right. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. So uh, stop and watch the snowflakes, yeah, stuff exactly. like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, anything specifically going on events wise that uh, support people to help them? I mean, you obviously want to put a focus on this because that's the best thing doing, but what do you got? You know, just um, I deal with prevention, drug prevention with our youth. And uh, we do Arizona Youth Survey every other year, and the new data just came out. So I just wanted to share some of that with you as well. Um, on the positive note, our cigarette use for youth is going down. Awesome. Um, and our alcohol youth is, use is going down as well. But on the negative side, we do have our e-cigarettes that is substantially increasing. Yeah. Um, and then our marijuana use is substantially increasing. It, it was about a 25% increase from just 2016 to 2018. And we're talking about youth. Yes, youth. Right. We shouldn't be doing any of this. So exactly. it, I don't care what side of legalization you're on. It's it's youth shouldn't be doing any of it. Absolutely. Right. And yeah. this is 8th, 10th, and 12th graders that were actually surveyed. Wow. And this has been going on for years and years, the survey and, and the results. Uh, we've been involved since 2010. So we've got data all the way back since then. Right. Okay. Well... Thanks. Is there a way people can get access to that to really read through it? Or Absolutely. They can contact me, uh, Vicki Solomon, um, ncdp.rocks, um, or you can go online to the Arizona Criminal Justice website, and they have it on there as well. They have Arizona data and Navajo County data. Very good. Anything else that we need to talk about? Well, you know, about? Uh, as we're dealing with people that this time of year possibly get in depression and they may feel like there's absolutely nothing they can do. They have no other options. And so they want to harm themselves or things like that. Right. Um, there's, there's some easy, cause you know, it's not always easy to go talk to a person face to face and you know, somebody they feel that they trust. And that's kind of where some of that depression starts to creep in and whatnot. There's, there's actually some numbers, you know, like with your cell phone, you can text, to the number 741741 and just send a text help or whatever you want to text on there and it'll start a conversation with with people that are there to that's what they do is that's phenomenal kind of like peer support right um and and they've been trained to be able to help individuals with you know creating other options um there's also the the suicide hotline which is i believe the number is uh 800 273 talk I believe is, uh, so I think that's what, 8552 or something like that. Okay. But uh, those are some good numbers to, you know, remember and, and reach out. Don't, you know, don't just all of a sudden create your last option of harming yourself. Right. And that, you know, in this day and age of, of I've seen memes all the time talking about, oh, if you do this with 911 or you do this with a bank teller thing, which are all not accurate, <laughs> the 741741 is accurate. You yeah. can actually do that. So, yeah. Yeah, that's that's a good one. Awesome. Well, thank you two for coming in today. Yeah, I really appreciate you. it. Appreciate your time. Um, anything else? We just want to make sure we got it all. You know, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. Awesome. Well, however you want to say it, I don't care. Just smile and be happy and and say hi to people. There you go. It, it makes a world of difference to people just saying hi. It sure does. Be happy and everybody else will be happy around you. Hey, that's going to be it for this week's community shout on Birdman here for Birdman Media and uh, also the uh, WMI TV. Thanks for all the viewers out there and Sholo TV as well. All the podcast listeners. Hey, if you want to come in and talk about what you've got going in, going on, it's very easy. Just stop on by at 10 a.m. on Tuesdays. I'm Birdman reminding you if I don't see you around town, I catch you right here on the web. 